Well, I want to congratulate Missouri State and Coach Petrino on a great game plan. Um, he had his kids better prepared than I did, and uh, uh, he did a wonderful job. They got a really good quarterback. We knew that coming in. Man, did he make a lot of plays, and uh, you know, we turned the ball over uh, twice, and then uh, – but when Bryce Stevens returned to punt for a touchdown, that hadn't been done. You know, it was last year, um, I guess, but first time this year. And, and we're just so fortunate to win. You know, these games like this are, you know, the, if you're not playing well or the other team's playing well or whatever the situation is, you're just trying to fight and claw to get out with a win. And there were several different times in a game that it looked like we weren't going to. And uh, our kids just kept fighting and clawing and to come out with an 11-point win. Uh, it says a lot about the culture, I think, of our program and our kids. So I'm really proud that we won the game. Uh, and I'll leave it at that right now. Sam, the, the punt return, what, what was your vantage point on that? And obviously that was that was a huge momentum turn and play. Gave you lead well, first. Sam Bakke, was, he was on their gunner. And we felt like that if we could handle the gunner, that we would have a, not an opportunity to score a touchdown, but an opportunity to return a, a decent uh, return. And Bakke did a really good job on the outside. And then, you know, Bryce won 100 meters in Oklahoma. He's fast. And he got up the sideline. Guys did a great job, but he got up the sideline and outran them. And, Big, 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 big play in the game. I was happy for him and the special team. I was happy for Fountain, you know. Uh, but that was – we thought we'd have a chance to return one, but we obviously didn't think it would go for a touchdown. What was the feeling on the sidelines? Because you've been trailing the entire game, and then just like that, you're ahead. Well, we had to put some pressure on them. We never put any pressure on them. You know, they – you know, we're up seven, seven, then 10, and 17, or 14, and 17, and then one or the other. And then, uh, and then went up and we tied it, and they went up a touchdown, and went up a field goal, went up 10. We just, they never really had pressure on them. We never had gotten ahead of them. And then uh, you know, that allowed us to play with the lead, which you know, was a big, big thing uh, at the end of the game. Coach, I know you preach one game at a time. Do you think that your team was looking forward to next week? No, I don't. I mean, I, I, I thought, I'll be honest with you, I thought we had a really good week of practice. I think we were focused. Now, I think there's a difference in looking forward to next week and not giving enough respect for the team you're playing. I think that. And, and uh, I just think Missouri State outplayed us, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but if I was going to have a reason why or something like that, it would be because they did. And the other thing is, is that, you know, I remember we went in there and beat Cincinnati and nobody was happy. Nobody was this. Well, Cincinnati's a really good team, you know, and so we're not going to have a problem getting up for the next few, you know, the name on the side of the hat, pretty significant. So. But I don't in any way want to not give Missouri State everything they deserve because they were – I don't know if their team wasn't better than us today because we beat them, but coach was better than me today, and and uh, and I got to get that fixed. Their fourth and one play where they scored the touchdown, Arkansas fans have seen that before. Is that the first time I you've mean, seen we it? Were, no. I mean, we were in – Zero coverage. We had a guy for him. He just – and it was really a great call because, you know, if he doesn't – you know, gutsy call and wide open, you know. But um, it's not like we planned on cutting him loose. But, yeah, it was a great call by coach and well executed. Coach, early on it seemed like pretty much – everything that could go wrong went wrong. Yeah, uh, man. What, what do you think contributed to that? And like, what was the mood on the sideline while it was all unfolding? My mood or what do you mean? The sideline. The sideline. I mean, did you get, uh, what no, 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 no,
But, you know, I learned against Auburn last year not to panic. You guys may think I did on the fourth down where we ran the ball. But I tried not to panic because if I do, the team will. And uh, so we just kept talking to them about what we're doing good. We're running well into the boundary. We were protecting well on offense. We weren't holding on to the ball. You know, we gave it to them on the – goal line i mean we've got to score and we give it to them about on the 25 we're about to you know we're, we're moving the ball well um we couldn't get off the field on third down we didn't tackle well tonight at all um but you know we made enough plays to win it we we've got to get better and all that kind of stuff but no we didn't panic i if we do it just becomes a point fest and we're a team. I don't want to do that. You mentioned that fourth down call where you ran it on fourth and nine. What what happened there? Well, we ran it on fourth and nine is exactly what happened. He turned around, he handed a ball, <laughs> and he ran in there for about five. And then they, the official come up, and he goes, the other way. And Missouri State's team came out, and they started hauling butt down the field. Um, the call was um, – it was a run to run. Uh, we thought that we that we had them in two or quarters, and uh, we thought we could surprise them and get them in there. And and uh, it was a run to run where basically we can hand it or KJ can run it, and and uh, it didn't work. And that's that's the honest goodness truth. I wish I could tell you that we had a pass on and something happened. That's the truth though, but it didn't work. Yeah, you guys finished with eight sacks tonight. I think that's the, about the most in a game in, in 10 years. How did, how did pressure on the quarterback like kind of We had the game? to, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're fighting our butt off, you know, but we had to pressure him. And, uh, I mean, the guy was hard to tackle. He's a good player, you know, and, uh, uh, but we had to pressure him. And, and of course, uh, JD got a couple, I guess, and Drew got two or three, I think. And, and uh, Drew's so valuable in that because he can a lot of times run you down if you you know if you get out of the pocket he can run you down and things of that nature. But going into the game, that was exactly the game plan. We were going to put pressure on him because we knew how good the receivers were. We just couldn't contain him, and he would get outside the pocket and make plays with his feet or with his arm. You know, what I'm you so happy we won, man. Unbelievable. What have you thought about Drew's ability to get in the in the offensive like backfield it. first three weeks? I like it. What do you think about it? <laughs> uh, question for you, man. I mean, well, what's the answer? He's I mean, he what he is, he's long, he's very strong. Uh and that's his forte, you know, before he transferred on the line of scrimmage guy. I like what we're doing with him. We're we're putting him on the edge, putting him in the in inside and in over the guard. Uh, but he's just a really good player, and he has a knack to rush the quarterback. And Barry's Barry and and uh, Mike have drawn up some really nice packages for him. Coach Matt Landers had a career day. Just what? How important was it for him to have this kind of breakout game? Well, I didn't really see what. Let me look see what Matt did. Eight, eight targets, seven catch, 120. Yeah, you know, um, I'm proud of Matt because he dropped the pass against South Carolina, and he struggled with that. I mean, it it was bothering him. I hope he doesn't mind me saying that. I told him, I said, you're going to drop another one eventually. You will. But it ain't because you don't want to, and it's not that you can't catch it. It's just you dropped it, so get over it you know, and move on. And I mean, the good Lord's perfect. Nobody else is just, we're going to be all right. And to him to bounce back like that, that's big. He's going to help us though. He's a good player, really good player. He's going to help us throughout the year. I'm awful proud of him and for him. Can you Thank talk you about, for the question. sorry, can you talk about uh, how the d offense defense cleaned up the penalties in the second half? Well, what do we have at halftime? Three? Did we have three? And then we had two 
two false starts, I think, in the second half. I don't remember. Uh, how many did we end up having penalty wise? Six. So I can't remember where the third. I can't remember where the third one was. I know we had uh, uh, a couple of holdings on special teams, which we had made such a big deal out of it. But um, yeah, you know, usually penalties happen when you get tired or you know when you get tired your feet aren't there you're grabbing you're holding because your feet can't get you to the thing and and uh so six is better than last week we had 10 we you know if we get around four and three a game that's probably going to happen but uh i will we got it work to do on it but i was proud that we we cleaned it up and especially on the punch you know i, I first i was looking on a punt return to see if there's any flags laying back there, you know. Coach, uh, Rocket Sanders, uh, 22 carries, 167 yards. But the one I wanted to ask about was the – looked like a, like a, sh a shuffle pass, shovel pass that goes up the middle 73 yards. I don't think I've ever seen a shovel pass up the – it goes up the middle for 73 yards. Well, you about did in that one because they bumping, they were bumping him and this, that, and that. And he just got through there about like that. And then that's why his mama named him Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, for him, you know, to have uh, 200 and I don't know what he had, 240 something yards of total offense, uh, you know, it was unfortunate for him because he'll take it personally. I mean, good good players do about, you know, we lost the ball down there uh, on the one. He'll take it personal, but he, you know, he, he did because then he come back, he said, hey, I got to make up for it. Good ones do that. Um, but yeah, that little, it was just down the pipe shovel with him and the old line blocked it up. And then he just pew, took off. It was beautiful. We needed it bad. Coach, there's a lot of times tonight where it seems like KJ may have had an opportunity to run, but decided to stay in the pocket and let plays develop. Was that by design for him no. to let things develop or? What? No, I just believe that he, he felt like someone was going to come open for him. Here's what I do now. He was very, very comfortable with his protection, you know, and so he thought normally the clock in your head goes off and you go, hey, I got to run. But I think especially like it might have been a second quarter where he had a lot of time to throw the ball. I think he got comfortable and I, I think he just kept holding it, holding it, hold it, feel like somebody may come up with sometimes they did and, and then sometimes they didn't. But I think it was more. It wasn't designed. I think it was just more KJ being KJ and saying, hey, I, I, can, I can hang in here a little bit longer and give them some time. Sam, you know, a lot of top 10 teams have been losing. We know that. Mm -hmm. It was rough for you guys tonight, but you found a way to win. And yeah. you outscored them 38 to 10 after you fell behind initially. Yeah. So um, how big was it to, to find a way to win? Uh, and, and, and you you know what you can build off this. Can you imagine walking in here getting beat tonight? I would say you want to trade me spots. I mean, nobody, y'all know us, you know, nobody wants to be up here losing a game that you're supposed to win. You know what I mean? So it was, I'm so glad we won and glad that the kids turned what was, everything was going downhill and turned it around and, and, uh, so I don't know if I answer your question, but I'm glad to, I'm glad they turned around. Glad we won. Maybe kind of I can build off this going. I think we can. I mean, I think eventually. I don't. I don't want to get 17 to nothing again and say, "Hey, we did it one time. Let's do it again." I'd rather hold on that one, you know. But if it does, I think you can. I think you can learn from it. Sure do. I'm sorry, Rocket. Another hundred yard game, another career high. Yeah, something. What'd you think of his running? Then what'd you think of KJ's pass? Yeah, I thought both of them played well. I don't know KJ's numbers here. I'll look real quick, but um, you know, we just told KJ on the last couple of drives, he just said, "Hey, it's your game. Go take over the game." I mean, that's what he does, and I just wanted him, him to know we were expecting him to, you know. <laughs> so, and he did. You know, I mean, that's that's what good players do. They always can't do it, you know, every single time. But most of the time he can do it, and that's what he did. And Rocket played, you know, 200-something yards of offense, played his butt off. He cares. All, a lot of them, all of them do in there, but he, 
he wanted to make up for that fumble, and he did. Coach, you still didn't see Dominic Johnson tonight. Um, any update on when we're going to see him? fine. I mean, going into the game, we had said that he's ready and that we could play him. And uh, I actually don't know how much uh, uh, R Dub played. I don't know if he uh, how much he played tonight. I, I don't know, but um, we were going to go down that order. AJ, of course, Rocket, then AJ, then R Dub, and then Dominique. And and uh, I didn't think he had played. I did, I did. I wasn't positive, you know, but I didn't think he had played. But he'll be fine. I mean, I think. I think once he um, – when he gets up in the morning, I think he'll be – his mind was kind of wishy-washy on if he was ready or not. Um, so, I think he'll be fine, ready, ready to go next week. I do believe he'll play next week, though. Along those same lines, you have any update on Slusher? And we also saw Jashad Stewart wasn't dressed out tonight. Jashad, uh, I think he'll be fine on – hopefully Monday. And I think, and I've said it last week on slash two and, but I'm hoping that he'll be ready to go by Monday. I, I sure thank you, Will, but I, I don't know that. Sam, you were, you know, Joe Adams, you ever talked to him? He was, he was here tonight cause he got in the hall of honor. Who? Joe Adams, yeah. probably the most huh. electrifying yeah. returners as I read all due respect to you know, Ken Hatfield or whoever, yeah. but um, just, you know, I don't know, is that karma Joe's in the house and, he ran yeah. back two punts for – That's what it was. We need to take him down to Dallas. <laughs> is that – Hunter, can we do that or is that – There you go. <laughs> hey, find somebody to kick – got some kickoff returns. Bring, let's get him to – he was electric when he played here. Good for him. Congratulations to him and all the other ones inducted to the Hall of Fame. But uh, I don't know if there's any correlation. Ask him. He, he may – he may think there is, but no, it was awesome. I'm sure it was awesome for him to see as well. We setting a record, buddy, or what are we doing? <laughs> I mean, are we, are we, is this a pre Texas A&M? Are we, is this Thursday before A&M or can we leave? I covered the 